Welcome to the true crime story that shocked the nation. Stephen Avery, a name synonymous with controversy, injustice, and the quest for truth. From a wrongful conviction in 18 years behind bars to a stunning exoneration, only to be thrust back into the spotlight with another accusation. Join us as we unravel the twists and turns of a life marked by legal battles, media frenzy, and the relentless pursuit of justice. This is the story of Stephen Avery, a saga that will leave you questioning everything you thought you knew about the American justice system. Stay tuned. Stephen Avery gained widespread attention following the release of the Netflix documentary series, Making a Murderer. The series examined Avery's complex and controversial legal battles, which have sparked debates about the American criminal justice system. I understand why. There's so much more information out there not stated in Netflix's spin. In fact, the deeper I dove, the messier it got. So many mistakes. And if anyone deserves another trial, a fair trial, it would be Stephen Avery. And I think the state needs to do the right thing here without prejudice. So let's get some basics done here. Stephen Avery was born on July 9, 1962 in Manitowoc County, Wisconsin. He grew up in a modest family that operated a salvage yard. And in 1985, Avery was convicted of sexual assault and attempted murder of Penny Bernstein. He maintained his innocence throughout the trial, but was sentenced to 32 years in prison. However, in 2003, after serving 18 years in prison, Avery was exonerated due to new DNA evidence that identified another man as the perpetrator. His wrongful conviction and subsequent release brought significant attention to flaws in the criminal justice system in Wisconsin, particularly Manitowoc, and more specifically in how evidence and suspects were handled home party that's been a long time coming. Not as long, however, as it could have been. I just can't wait to see him and grab him and hold him again. In 1985, Stephen Avery was sentenced to 32 years behind bars for the rape and attempted murder of a woman jogging on a Manitowoc County beach. After serving 18 years in prison, new DNA results were completed this week. Avery did not do it. Thursday, Stephen Avery was released from prison. <laughs> it's quiet. I ain't got to listen to nobody. This is Everybody where Stephen Avery calls home. A small fishing shanty barely bigger than the prison cell he spent 18 years in. But to Avery, it's freedom. No bars, no cement. Avery spent 18 years wrongly imprisoned for a rape he never committed. Right after his release, he moved in with his parents and worked at their salvage yard. But differences drove him out. I wanted to be by myself. Plus, I didn't want to deal with none of them up there. Avery admits after 18 years of being locked up, he's had a hard time fitting in. Only one of his five kids talks to him. I barely see them. Just every once in a while, I see them uh, downtown. That's about it. They looked out of the way. A wood-burning stove keeps Avery warm at night, and he showers at his sister's home. He's barely scraping by on a few small loans from friends, but through it all, he hangs on to one dream. To have a life again, find a nice woman, and maybe have a couple kids yet. Start all over. So Stephen is released, got his freedom, won a lawsuit against Manitowoc County for those 18 years incarceration for $36 million, no less. So he was just waiting for payday, basically, but then just two years later, Avery was arrested again in 2005 for the murder of Teresa Halbach. She was a 
photographer who had visited the Avery Salvage Yard several times to photograph vehicles for Auto Trader magazine. Some of what were said to be her remains were found on Avery's property, leading to his arrest and a highly publicized trial, and if you're alive at all, you most likely have heard about it. Please, we, we beg you. We know she's out there. We just want to find her. They are desperate prayers from the family of Teresa Hallbuck. We would need everybody's help. Please keep looking. People have been tremendous. Just can't say enough of At this candlelight vigil, their prayers echoed by hundreds in the community. I would certainly hope that she comes home safe. That would be the best, most optimistic hope, and that her welfare, body and soul is looked after at this you know, critical time. Avery's trial for the murder of Teresa Hallbach began in 2007. The prosecution presented evidence including Avery's DNA on Hallbach's car and her remains found on his property and witnesses' testimonies. Avery's defense argued that the evidence was planted by law enforcement officers who sought to frame him due to his previous lawsuit against Manitowoc County for wrongful imprisonment, and this is wherein lies the problem. Some say they framed Avery, planted evidence, coerced confessions. Earlier I said the deeper I dove the messier it gets, it's true. The police need to look at and question another member of the family again. And although I'm sure any evidence that was on that person's computer is no longer there, or the computer altogether has long been destroyed, enough said. Look into this case for yourself and you'll see what I mean. Uh, narrator's note. Brendan Dassey's involvement, and I'm going to make this quick. Uh, Brandon Dassey was Stephen's nephew, who was also implicated in this crime, was 16 at the time, gave a confession that he later recanted, claiming it was coerced. His conviction further fueled debates about the handling of the interrogations and the treatment of minors in the justice system in Wisconsin. And that's all I'll say about this right now. I may make Dassey a whole nother episode. Stephen Avery is away from the search tonight, staying near Krivitz. He says he has no idea why Teresa Hallbach's car was found on his family's property. Do you have any idea how her SUV ended up on your family's land? You got me. I don't know. I, I, I got a hunch Manitowoc County planning it. Manitowoc County tells us that's not true. Avery says Hallbach has been coming to the salvage yard for about a year as a photographer for a car sales magazine to help the Averys sell cars. She takes a picture of the vehicle, she writes down a serial number, then I pay her, and she gives me the book and the paper, what she fills out, and that's it. The salvage yard is big. Chopper 4 with Power Zoom shows us how much area investigators have to cover. Avery says he's sure Hallbach isn't here. Do you hope she'll be found? Oh, yeah. You know, I take, when somebody's missing, that takes a, a toll in a family. Tonight in the investigation into 25-year-old Teresa Halbach's disappearance. The Calumet County woman has been missing now for more than a week. Investigators say they found evidence human in nature relating to Teresa's disappearance, but they won't say whether they think she's still alive. Stephen Avery is in police custody tonight. He was arrested on an unrelated weapons charge, and now Avery's family is submitting DNA samples to investigators. We begin tonight's breaking news coverage with Isabel Kelly, who has the latest on Stephen Avery's arrest. Isabel. Stephen Avery was arrested this afternoon at his brother's house in Manitowoc County, and now he faces charges of a felon possessing a firearm. 
Investigators came to Earl Avery's home this afternoon where they arrested Stephen Avery and took his brother Earl into custody. Stephen's other brother Chuck and his sister Barbara, her two children, and Stephen's parents, Alan and Dolores, were also taken into custody. Today's arrest stemmed from an incident in 1985 where Avery ran a deputy sheriff's wife off the road at gunpoint and told her to get in his car. And today's arrest is not related to the sexual assault he served time for and was later exonerated for. In 2015, Netflix released Making a Murderer, a documentary series that chronicled Avery and Dassey's cases. The series presented a critical view of the investigation and trials, suggesting potential misconduct by law enforcement and raising questions about Avery's guilt. The documentary attracted a global audience and sparked widespread discussions and petitions advocating for Avery's and Dassey's release. Since his conviction, Avery has continued to fight for his freedom, his legal team too, pro bono mind you, led by high profile attorney Kathleen Zellner, and she has filed multiple appeals presenting new evidence and arguing for a retrial. Despite these efforts, Avery remains incarcerated as of 2024. Similarly, Dassey's appeals have also been unsuccessful, although his case has garnered significant support from legal experts and advocates. The Stephen Avery case has had a profound impact on public perception of the American justice system. It's highlighted issues such as wrongful convictions, police misconduct, the reliability of forensic evidence, and the, the treatment of vulnerable individuals during interrogations. The case continues to be a point of reference in discussions about criminal justice reform. Stephen's story is a complex and polarizing saga that encapsulates significant challenges within the criminal justice system. Whether viewed as a victim of systematic failure or perpetrator of a heinous crime, Avery's case underscores the importance of due process, the need for judicial oversight, and the ongoing quest for justice in the American legal landscape. I hope the best for Stephen and his nephew Brandon, and I thank all of you for watching.